Because I felt that for Maxime, his play in a lot of these online events has not been not been great, to, to put it mildly. <laughs> so you guys, we are we are back. We are live. A uh, very very difficult match. A lot of credit goes to Maxime for playing um, playing very very well. As I said in the interview. He was extremely resourceful. He defended very well in a lot of positions. Um, and that's one thing that I think I did not really see see before. Thank you to Gotham Chess for the raid with 7393. Thanks so much to Gotham Chess. Thank you to the real Mr. Parikh for the three. That's life. Anyway, all right, here we go. So let's talk about the match against Maxime. Again, going into this match, I felt pretty good overall. Um, I, I thought that, uh, that I should be the favorite if I play well. Um... But to his credit, Maxime played extremely well. And I, when I say played extremely well, um, so what I mean by that is that Maxime has generally been very good at playing positions which are aggressive and tactical and sharp. And in this match, Maxime got some positions that normally in the past he would have just probably fallen apart and just lost. And so a lot of credit goes to Maxime because he defended extremely well um, in, in many, 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 many situations. Um, at any rate, I'm going to talk about the first... I'm not going to go through the whole match, obviously, but I'll, I'll start with the first really critical moment for me. Um... Uh, which is in this 5 plus 1 portion. So we start out the 5 plus 1 portion in a very strange manner. I won the first game, um, and I think we drew the next two, and then I lost the fourth one, um, or I lost like two in a row. So I was down by one. Um, then I was able to win a couple of games in a row. I think I won two or three. I think three in a row to get up to plus two. So as I was saying, um, I won three in a row, and I was plus two. Um, and this was the final game of the 5 plus 1 portion. And this was probably the first really critical moment from my standpoint because this was where Maxime, I think, was on tilt um, in this first game. As you'll see from the... Or wait, I'm on the wrong scene. As you'll see from the uh, from the evaluation, this is already very bad. So Maxime was was on tilt. He had lost three games in a row. He'd gone from, uh, I think, plus 1 to, to minus 2. The music is loud. I think it's good. If it's, I can turn it down just a touch. Um, let me see... Um, anyway, um, so Matt, Maxime was on tilter. He'd lost three games and he, he, he lost three games in a row and, um, he was, he was down by two. And in this game, I got a nice little pawn wall. I got a lot of pawns to fifth rank. As you see from the valuation, it was completely winning. Um, but I found a way to really, this was really critical because in this game, I was just much better. Probably I missed a clear cut win somewhere in here. Let's see. So I'm not even, oh, I G4. Uh, Rook G, yeah, whatever, not such a big deal. But anyway, the point is that in this game, um, I, I really was dominating more or less from start to finish. And then towards the end of the game, um, somewhere around here, wait, where was the win? Bishop B3 is winning? Fair enough. But anyway, uh, the point is that somewhere around here, I was probably winning. And then I found a way not only to turn this from a win um, into a draw, but, but I turned it into a loss. And... Um, I really felt that it was important. Thank you. All right, you guys. So as I was saying, not only did I turn this from uh, probably a win into a draw, but I turned it into a loss, which was really critical. Um, I think even if I had kept this as a draw, I would have I would have not necessarily won the match cleanly, but I think I would have been on my way and in really good shape. And instead, I turned this into a loss. And this was when I knew that um, it was going to be a dogfight. Because the irony to the position is this end game here. Um, is that after e5, rook f2, here, 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 this is actually very the same setup that I had against Heikmar to Rosen in my match earlier. Thank you to Chess for the raid with 8725. Thank you so much, Chess. Thank you to P Mark with the five gifted. Thank you to Colts with the prime. Zanzibar with the tier one. Do you know who with the tier one? And Chris Neal with the prime. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you to Chess for the huge raid. Appreciate it. Um, so, as I was saying, this, this structure was the exact same pawn, pawn situation that I had against Heikmar to Rosen. I might try to pull that game up. Uh, in a second if I can find it um, but same thing so I was very upset that I found a way to lose this and I think it was still a draw here right yeah this this is still a draw if I go rook e3 and inexplicably here I played rook f5 for no reason um, if I go rook e3 rook f7 king g8 check king f8 he can't push the pawn and um, this is just a draw because I can use this one to distract the rook and help to bring the rook over um, so this was inexplicable what I did in this game. And I was very upset because this turned it from um, a situation where potentially it could have been plus three after the five plus one, and it was plus one. Um, so it was really, really bad. Thank you to Arden Canelli for the 20. Thank you to Salty Mike with the prime. Sige so with the prime. D-Rack Delta with the prime. And B BG Karma for the tier one. Thank you so much. Um, 
So this was the first moment when I was, thank you to Flickinator for the Prime, appreciate it. So this was the first moment, um, thank you to Andrea for the 500 bits, where I knew something was off. Um, because it was just, it really was uncalled for that I found a way to lose this game. So this ended the 5 plus 1 portion, and we ended up um, where I was ahead. Uh, what was I ahead after? I was up by one game, I don't know the exact score. Um, so this was the first really critical moment. The 3 plus 1 did not really get better. Um... There were a couple of moments at 3 plus 1 again where I could not put it away. So this was an example where Maxime, I think, was a little bit on tilt. And um, we played this line the whole match, basically. And um, Maxime pretty much just blundered the game immediately. He played this line, and he blundered the fossil of knight g5. Bishop holds the knight. And my my, my op and my, my, my waffle, they take on h7. My queen comes to h5, and it's gg. So Maxime basically just blundered here um, for... For, for no real reason um, in this position, he just blundered the game and just lost uh, at the very start of the game. So this was very unfortunate for Maxine because if we had drawn the first two games at three plus one, I won this game and I was up by two again. So I was ahead by two and it seems to be the theme that in every match, this was sort of the critical moment. Um, when someone was ahead by two points, they could never get that that third game to go up by so, three. So that, that was kind of the point. Thank you to Atomic for the three months. Thank you so much. Was that basically... Uh, Maxime just threw this game away, and so I was again up by two, and I needed to get this plus three, and I just couldn't do it. Um, for example, in the match yesterday between Magnus and Maxime, Magnus was up too early. He lost this game on time, which he should have won, and that would have put him up by three points in that match. My match against Wesley, I think there was a moment, there were two moments Wesley was up by two against me, and he couldn't win the third game to get plus three. Um, so really, really. Uh, interesting that in all the matches, that's what it came down to. Is it came down to, uh, you know, there were moments in 5 plus 1, 3 plus 1 where someone was ahead by two games and they couldn't get that third game. Um, and I think if they got that third game, the match would be over. Thank you to Ascension Fragment with the Prime, Dark Angel with the Prime. Thank you so much. Um, but yeah, once again, you guys, it was, it was a great match. This was a moment when Maxime blundered and it, I was up by two again. And then what did I do in the next game? I think the next game, yeah, next game was this one where I just was lost out of the opening. Um, and Maxime, I mean, played picture perfect in this game, so not much to say. So this is a picture perfect game for Maxime after he was down by two. Um, and that this was also a critical moment. So we kept going through the three plus one. And this at this moment, again, I was up by two points here. And this was, we were down to maybe like seven minutes in three plus one. And um, I got a good position. Okay, so I go here. Um... And I get this position that's very, very good. Um, like, we get this position. And here, again, I'm up two points here. And I thought that at this point, I'm on my way. I'm probably going to get the win. Worst case, it's a draw. Absolute worst case, it's a draw. I'm up a pawn. Really hard to lose this. Um, and uh, and then, then sure enough, uh, I found a way to not only turn this from a winning position into a draw, but into a loss. Again, if I had drawn this game, I would have been unhappy, but it would have kept my cushion at plus two instead of plus one. Um, thank you to Marius Rao for the tier one, Afu's Q with the prime, AC Huck with the tier one, and Jahu with the four. Thank you so much to Jibzy with the 10, or Jibs with the 10 gifted subs. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of things that I will say. Maxime came into this with a strategy, and his strategy was, my name is not Maxime Vashi Lagrav. My name is Jan Pomniachi. I'm going to play fast. I'm going to be bold and go for it. Um, so uh, Maxime was very, very, he was moving very quickly throughout the match. This kind of was throwing me off because he was playing quickly, but he also was defending very well. Um, anyway, we keep going with this game. It was always better. And then somehow we reached this position. I'm like, okay, this position, you know, it's, it's got to be a draw, right? I can just trade queens and make a draw. And then for some reason... I thought that I go here, I just eat the juicer, and I forgot that black can go f5, f4, and I completely lost my mind and just proceeded to um, turn this from a draw into a loss in like literally like five moves. Look at this, it's still zeros, it's still zeros even here. And in like five moves, I turn it from a draw into a loss. Yeah, I turn it from a draw into a loss in like five moves. Uh, respect MVL, I have a lot of respect for Maxim. He played really, really well throughout the match. Um, so I don't know what you're talking about. You're acting like I'm not respecting him. He played a great match. Thank you, Dark Eyed Guy, for the Prime. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I mean, it was a great match. Um, but this was the second criti really critical moment when I could have been ahead by three points going into Bullet. If I had won this game and been plus three, I think there's almost no chance that it's, it's really tight in the one plus one. Um, but yeah, he played really well in Bullet. Um, 
Thank you to McCool for the uh, gifted sub. Thank you so much. Then let's move to the uh, the one plus one. So I was ahead by one game as we go into the one plus one, and um, and this is the game where Maxine played amaz amazingly well. Um, hey, per random for the three months. Thank you so much. Um, so it's just generic, very normal stuff. I've probably had this at least 50 times against Ali Reza. Um, and we got to this position where white should be better. I think a little bit better. Um, maybe not. Maybe not, actually. It felt like with the queen on the edge, a big big connect three here in the center. White should be better. Maybe not. But I used maybe 20 seconds here to calculate this tactic. The idea was knight e5, takes, takes. If queen e5, I go knight to f5, and I fossilize the queen on e5. And um, and the bishop on e7, for that matter. And uh, it's basically very good for white maybe not winning but very good technically speaking and then maxime used maybe like 10 seconds and he found bishop d6 which is an amazing move here um amazing move it just it basically it's you know it's a classic right triangle situation where um the queen and the bishop hit everything in the on the diagonal and um that's just really good now maybe i could have played f4 here and only been slightly worse but again you know it's not great thank you to mccool for the gifted subs thank you to k2 clint for the prime um, and this was this was amazing by Maxim. This was really really pristine finding this bishop d6 move because it's very easy to panic here, see knight c6, and see like uh oh my whole position is collapsing. Um, so this was amazing, amazingly well done by Maxim here to play bishop to d6. Uh, it was just a really really amazing move. Um, and then I lost this game and the match was tied uh, at the start of the one one. And then we go this game. This was the second game. Um, it was even at this point, and now I lost this very tough game in the Italian. Um, I got a good position here, I think. Yeah, I played a3. Um, but yeah, here I should have gone knight d7 instead. I thought a3, b3, and just like bishop a5, c3, create pressure on the d file. Um, or sorry, on the diagonal. I mean, not d file, a diagonal. And um, But then after Maxim takes, it's still probably good for black, but it's very hard to play. And the problem is after. After we get this position, um, white basically starts attacking. Everything is angled towards my king side. I have no protection. Um, so this was amazing, amazingly well played. I think at some point I had a shot though, right? And now he sacks. And somewhere around here, I should have been winning this game, but I didn't do it correctly. I went here. And apparently queen e7... And just knight e5, and it's just winning because I liquefy, um, sorry, I liquidate all his pieces, and he doesn't have any attacks anymore. Um, but basically, this game was, and I played king h7, insane, because after knight f4, now you see, like, now it's really hard to play. I was down on the clock, um, my king is in trouble, my rooks are all loose, everything's hanging. Um, so basically, th this game was really critical, too, because I could have won this game also. Um, like, here again, probably knight e5. Oh, I also have 97. Wait, rook d4? Oh, and oh, oh, oh. Oh, I'm so bad at chess. Oh my gosh, it's 97. Yeah, if I go 97 here, I win because basically the rook can no longer stay on the line because the pawn holds it, rook holds it, knight holds it, and the pawn's in the way. And if he takes, he just loses the juice around the edge. And if I go 97, I just win the game. And then probably, again, it would have been in good shape. But anyway, I proceeded to blunder this. Um, and again, it was winning here. But then I didn't take. I should have just traded and gone bishop b6. And um, probably it should be winning, but whatever. I managed not to... I managed to misplay this. Um, yeah, I gave him rook d7, and now it's like... Now it might be good for black, but very hard to play. I had no time on my clock either at this point. Um, so I lost this game, and that now I was down by one point. Um, we'll we'll sh we'll go to the one one. I was down by one, and then this I think um, was where was it? Wait a second. Okay. We drew. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, this was the, this was the critical game. So I was down by I was down by. Um, I was down by one point here. We played this line. Um, not very exciting. I'll just go through the game. Um, but I got this, this. I had this great game, actually. This was a really, really good game. I thought I played really well. Yeah, c5. Queen b6. Knight e5. Mm-hmm. Bishop e6. Mm-hmm. 
Bishop A2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this game I played really well. This was a good game. I found like six six perfect moves in a row. Um, and once I once I won this game, the match was back to even here. So um, it, this was a this was a very good win. So yeah, th this this was important. I won this game to get the match back to even. Um, and then what happened? And then this was probably yeah this was really the turning point. I think was this the one that put me up one? Yeah, I think this was the one that put me up one. So I kept going. I went back to B three. We played this opening, um, and we got this very messy position. Um, again, Maxine played really well. H4 was a good move. E5, he played all these moves in like seconds, and um, it was amazing the way he played. Although here, I think he had to go B5. This was probably the last critical moment of the match. If he'd gone B5 here, um, I, who knows what happens. It would have been a very messy position. Very tricky. Instead, he goes here, and after I get this pawn to capture, and then knight d4, uh, you can't recapture knight because of the pin. And once my horse starts jumping here, where it's protecting, it's got an outpost, it's all up in black's business. And um, black's piece are very me mediocre and misplaced. Um, so this was probably the really the last... Uh, last critical moment in the match for Maxime. Um, once I got the horse to c6... Uh, this was this was very good, but still, even here, Maxime kept finding good moves. Like as I was saying, Maxime's defense and resourcefulness was amazing. Like finding e4 and queen c3, I mean, it's winning for white, but you have to find king g2 or rook e3. Although rook e3 looks very clumsy and unnatural. Um, so uh, so basically, it's it's very very uh, very tricky, and he found a lot of these ideas. But I would say once I won this game, after I got a4, and I knew I was going to win the game. Um, I, I felt very good about the the overall situation because of course here when he goes here I go here next move is 97 and you get the lobster pincer on the edge of the board uh, he cannot protect his uh, bishop and after like takes check here just the classic lobster uh, knight also holds critical squares too so we got the win in this game and then we proceeded to win a couple of games at the end as well um, but very, very difficult match. Thank you to Real Trader for the tier one. Thank you to Lor Lorazis uh, for the 20 months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, GG cheers from France. Yeah, so, I, I mean, what I will say about this match is I found a way to, to win. Um, but if Maxime plays the way that he did yesterday against against Magnus and the way he did against me today, he has very, very good chances in the Canada's tournament. That's one thing I was actually concerned about is I felt that for Maxime, his play in a lot of these online events has not been not been great, to, to put it mildly. But yeah, it was um, it was it was a very tough match, and I think out of all the years that I've played in this event, I mean, I know I know I got crushed two years in a row by Magnus, so um, th those of course were not fun matches. But out of the three matches, uh, out of the three years that I've won, this was the hardest by far. Um, I mean, I had the one really smooth match against uh, against Vladimir Fedosev, but um, the match against Wesley was really really brutal, really really tough, and the match against uh, Maxime also very tough. Um, I thought I would be winning after three plus one. I thought I was. I should have a big edge and bullet. I mean, my general attitude, as I've said, um, is is as is as follows. I think that no matter who I play in bullet, I should be a favorite. So if if I'm playing against MVL or Wesley or whom or Magnus or whomever, um, I assume that I should be the favorite. So if I can get get to the bullet portion, not being behind, like against MVL or, or, or against Wesley, I assume that I should win. And if I don't win, credit to them. I'm not as good at bullet as I thought I was. Um, that's my general attitude, though. I, I've all, I believe that for a long time. Um, was Wesley harder MVL? I think you know it's it was weird. Like I feel objectively, Wesley played better. Maybe, I don't know if better chess is the word. Wesley never tilted. So so Wesley was very very good. Um, I felt like Maxime and I we both had moments where we tilted, and when we tilted though, we weren't able to fully maximize it. Like I didn't maximize it today on two occasions against Maxime. Wesley definitely didn't maximize it against me on two occasions in the semifinal. So it's very hard to judge um, what it is. But it, I felt like Maxime Maxime definitely tilted. Wesley did not tilt. Um, so very very uh, very hard to judge. But they both played amazing chess. Um, but I, what I would say is I felt like in this match, I didn't feel like I deserved to lose. In the match against Wesley, I felt that I deserved to lose. So if I, if I use that as the basis, then probably I would say that Wesley, Wesley played better than Maxime is what I would say. Um, that, that, that's, if I just have to be objective, that's what I would say. Because I felt that I should have lost to, um, I should have lost to Wesley. I don't feel like I should have lost this match. I know it was re really close and really tight, but I don't feel like I should have lost it.